Today we install RGB LEDs you can control with your 3D printer. We all know that adding LEDs to things makes it cooler, but with your 3D printer it can be somewhat useful as well. You can change the color of the LED based on your printer's status. And a lot of that is already baked into Marlin. There's a color scheme that all you have to do is plug in some pins from your main board where your RGB lines are plugged into, and it'll take care of the rest. But you can also control them with manual G-code commands if you wish, in your start and end G-code, for example. Now, as with everything, there's some things you need to watch out for when you're setting something up like this. I'm using 12-volt LEDs, but no matter what LED you're using, you can't power them directly from your printer's main board. That will fry your main board. There's not enough current. So we need to add in something like a MOSFET to step that up. Now you can power them directly from your 12 volt supply. If you have a 24 volt supply, you can get a pretty cheap converter to reduce that down to 12 volt if you need to. But today I'm going to walk you through all the steps of setting up the pins for your RGB LEDs, getting them powered, hooking them up to the MOSFET, and then controlling them with G-Code and Marlin. So, let's not waste any more time. Let's get into it. So for this tutorial, we're going to be doing a couple things. I am taking these RGB LEDs I got off Amazon. They're pretty affordable, and I will be able to control them with my printer's main board. I'm going to be using these small MOSFET modules. You can get these for less than 50 cents a piece on AliExpress. Definitely buy a few extras just in case something happens. We really only need three, one for each color, red, green, blue. And I want to mock the whole thing up before we take it to the printer, because in the printer right now I have a mini Rambo board and my pins are limited, but I want to show you on a ramp setup because this is going to be closer to a lot of the boards that you're going to want to use. Also for this setup, I'm going to be using my benchtop power supply to provide 12 volts. You're going to want to get 12 volts directly from your printer's power supply, or step down the 24 volts if that's what you have. You can probably just tag it here on the main terminal if you need to, run this over to your MOSFETs. The only problem with this setup is it's quite large. You have to find a place to put all these MOSFETs and the wiring that you're going to use. So it might not be the best solution for an existing printer, but you could definitely build this into a printer build if you'd like to, or even enclosure lights would work well. So this setup will show you how to get everything working, but you might want to consider creating a smaller PCB to integrate your MOSFETs into your light control. So let's start with the LED strip. Mine came with these DuPont connectors. In fact, there's pins just in the end of this. You can take this off and use the female end if you like. That's what we're going to do, because I'm just going to connect it with jumpers for this mock setup. But you can cut these strips and just solder it directly to the tape if you'd like on those terminals. So the colors will associate to the color of LED, blue, red, green, and then you have your common wire, which is white. So I'm just going to extend these out with some jumpers. We've got our jumpers on, now we'll cable up to the MOSFETs. Let's go ahead and provide 12 volts. Let's just call these MOSFETs red, green, and blue. Doesn't matter which one, just to make it simple for this video. On this side of the terminal, the VIN and ground, this is where your 12 volt is gonna come in. And you can just chain the 12 volt supply. So we'll plug it in here from the power supply and we'll just run it over to these other two MOSFETs. So there's the power and ground from the power supply. There's my ground chained down to the other MOSFETs. And I ran out of red jumpers, so I had to use white to chain the power 12 volt in down to the other MOSFETs, just like so. So now we have our LED strip, we have our 12 volt in here, this white wire, and then we have a ground wire to make the connection for red, green, and blue. So we're going to start by adding the 12 volt wire to one side of this MOSFET bar. I'm going to put it over here on this side. It doesn't really matter which V plus that you put it in, but it needs to go in this V positive terminal. So I'm going to set mine right here. And again, we're going to call this MOSFET the red MOSFET. So in the V negative terminal, I'm going to set the red wire for the LED strip right there. That means this MOSFET will control the red portion of the LED. And then on the second MOSFET in the V negative, I'm going to put the green wire for the green portion of the LED. And the third MOSFET in the V negative spot, I want to put the blue wire for the blue portion of the LED. Now just for a test, let's cable a jumper up to the signal line on each one of our MOSFETs. Red, green, blue. Make sure your leads aren't touching anything currently. We don't want to short anything out. And let's turn on our 12 volt power supply. So just to show you how this works, when the main board turns this signal pin to high, that will turn the MOSFET on and let the 12 volt current flow to your LED strip. 
So to simulate that pin going high, we'll take the signal wire for our red LED MOSFET and we'll make it go high 12 volt. We'll just stick it right here. You can see we're red. Same for the green. We'll make it go high. Now we're green. And final test, we'll make this one go high and now we're blue. So we know all three sections of our LED are working and our MOSFETs are set up correctly. And this setup will work as long as your main board and your MOSFETs share the same ground. This configuration should work just fine. So now we need to cable up to the main board so we can control it with pins and ultimately control it with the software. So we've got our typical ramp set up and we just need to pick a couple of pins to use for our red, green, and blue signal pins. Let's go with the AUGS2 pins right here because those aren't used by your LCD screen. Those should be open on most boards. So the signal wire for the red module, let's go with pin 40. That's the center pin on the AUGS2 on the top row right there. And for the green signal wire, let's go with pin 42. That's right next to it, right here. And for the blue signal wire, let's go with the pin below that. That's pin 44. And the power for the MOSFETs and my board for this test are going to be from the benchtop power supply. So I'm going to cable up some wires from that power supply to my main board. Here's a look at this mess just to give you an idea of how it's set up. Don't do this configuration. This is just for testing. I'm using a benchtop power supply. I will provide you with a diagram of how you want this set up. You want the MOSFETs and your printer's main board to be using the same power and ground. And always use the correct gauge of wire to power your main board. The small gauge wire for the LEDs should work just fine. There's not a ton of current there. Now I'm cabled up to the Rams USB. Let's head into Marlin and see about getting these configured. As always, this Marlin has been configured to work on this 3D printer. We're just altering this configuration to use the LEDs for this video. So let's go into configuration.h and you can do a control F and search for RGB. And here's the RGB control section. We're using just the red, green, blue LEDs, not red, green, blue, white. So we're gonna uncomment this line. And down here is where you can set the pin assignments. So for our red LEDs, we used pin 40. For our green LED, we used pin 42. And for our blue, we used pin 44. And that's all the changes we should have to make in Marlin to get it configured. So let's go ahead and go to tools. We'll select our board. This is Omega 2560. I'm on COM3 and we'll hit upload. And when the upload's complete, let's go ahead and test it out. Now just for this test scenario, I do have a thermistor hooked up to T0 because if you don't get a reading on temp, it's gonna hit thermal runaway automatically. So just for a test, I've plugged in this thermistor. I'm hooked up USB and I have the benchtop power supply currently off, but I'm getting ready to turn it on so it powers the main board and all my MOSFETs. So let's open up Pronterface and get into a terminal. Let's connect up to our board, COM3, 250,000, we're connected. And if we do M150B, that turns on the blue, full blast. We can set B to zero to turn blue off. M150R, red, full blast. R0 to turn it off. M150U for green, full blast. Zero to turn it off. So we've got it up and working where we can turn the pins on and off, like digital, on or off. But you can also set the intensity, but you need a PWM pin. Basically a pin that's a digital pin that's treated kind of like analog. And there are some of those available on the ramps board, especially the servos. There are a few others, but we're going to go for the servo pins. So let's switch over to pins 4, 5, and 6. That will allow us to use the Marlin color scheme, so when your bed or your hot end are heating up, the color intensity will get brighter. And that's something I definitely want to test. So let's set that up now. So let's move our red LED pin to pin four, which is this first servo pin right here. Let's move blue to pin five, the one right next to it. And then green to pin six, the one right next to blue. So back into Marlin, we changed our red pin to pin 4, our green pin to pin 6, and our blue pin to pin 5. And we can go ahead and re-upload. 
Now the upload is complete, let's head back into the terminal. We'll connect back up. Let's do an M150B, hit enter. Blue is on full blast. Now let's do an M150B90. Blue is a lot less bright. So we have 150B90. Let's do 150B90R150. Now we have pink. Let's turn red up to 255. Bright pink. So using the PWM pens, it just gives you a little more creativity on how you can use the LEDs. Most of the time, the digital pens will probably be just fine, but I wanted to see how this was going to work. So now we know we can control the intensity of the LED with a PWM pen. My only problem now is the current configuration of Log is using a mini Rambo board, and it has no open PWM pens. But what you can do is the minimum end stop pins are PWM pins. So you can switch your minimum end stop plugs in the software to use the maximum pin. And then the minimum pins will be open to control our LEDs. So that's what we're going to do now. So I'm going to take the minimum end stop wires and move them to the maximum pins, which are right above them. And with my minimum end stop pins open, I'm going to use the bottom pin or the third pin, that's the signal pin, for all of my RGB. So I'll just do red, green, blue. This is X, Y, Z. There's my RGB pins, and for the power for the LEDs, I'm just going to plug in the MOSFET board into the existing plug on the power supply. I'm just going to piggyback on for this configuration. You probably want to splice it in if you're doing this permanent. Like so, and then I'll plug it back in. It's hacky, I know it. Our wiring's done, now we need to do some Marlin configuration. So let's head into our pins file and reassign these pins. This is pins mini Rambo. We'll scroll down to the end stop section. So our minimum end stop pin is now 30 because that was the max pin. And our max end stop pin will become negative one because we're gonna use it for our LEDs. Minimum end stop pin, same thing, 24. And our Y max will become negative one to disable it because we're gonna use it for LEDs. And same with the Z. Minimum end stop pin will go to the maximum, 23 and maximum will get disabled. Now we can take these values and plug them in for our LEDs. So our X minimum end stop pin was 12. That's where our red LED is plugged in. So let's jump over to configuration.h. Our red LED pin becomes 12. Back to the pins file. Our green LED is plugged into 11. That's where our minimum end stop used to be. And our Z is plugged into 10. That's where blue is. So back to configuration.h, change green to 11 blue to 10. And that should be all we have to do. So let's go ahead and verify. Verify looks good. Let's go ahead and hit upload. Tools. Now we're on a mini Rambo. COM15. Upload. And when that upload's complete, now we can start a print. The LEDs will come on and they'll be blue when it's cold. When the bed starts to heat, they'll go to violet. And then when the hot end starts to heat, they'll go to violet to red. Now the bed's up to temp, we're at violet, the hot end's almost to temperature, we're getting ready to go to red, now we're red up to temp, and when the print starts, we go to white. Now we should be white during the whole print. When the print completes, the LEDs go green, and then the LCD waits for you to click to resume. If you click, LEDs go off. Now we can do the same kind of thing and start an NG code instead of using Marlin's schema, but it's probably a good idea to comment their schema out before you try to build yours. You can just comment out this line and re-upload. So when the print starts, let's turn all the LEDs to blue, M150B255. Then we're going to set the temp for the extruder and the heated bed, and we'll wait for the bed to get up to temp. Then when the bed's up to temp, let's change over to kind of a red-violet color, M150R255, U153B51. You can look those colors up. I'll leave a link to a calculator below. Then we'll leave it that color while we're waiting for the extruder to finish getting up to temp. Again, we'll do an M400 just to be safe. We want to make sure everything's been ran. And when the extruder's up to temp, we'll switch over to red, M150, R255, B0, U0. And then we'll start our homing and our leveling procedure. And then M400 again to make sure everything's been ran. And then during the print, we'll switch everything over to white. So M150, R255, U255, B255, and then we'll do our priming, and then we'll start the print. 
And then when the print's complete, we'll switch to green, M150U255V0R0. We'll throw a weight in there, and then we'll turn that extruder temperature off, and we'll move the print head up with this line. Then we're gonna use the M190 command R35. That sets a cooling for the bed temp, so we're waiting for the bed to get down to that temperature. Again, M400 to make sure all those commands are completed. And then when your bed's down to the temp and your part's ready to remove, let's set the lights to blue, M150, 255, R0, U0. Then we'll go ahead and turn the bed off completely. Turn the fan off. We can leave the fan on during that procedure to help cool the bed. That's the part fan. Then we'll move the Y-axis out to 200 to help us remove the part. We'll disable the motors. Then we'll do a G4S600 to wait for 10 minutes, 600 seconds. That'll leave the blue light on long enough so we know that it's time to remove the print. And then we'll run an M150, R0, U0, B0 to turn all the LEDs off. You can do this same kind of thing with M42. This just sets a pin state, so you can set any pin. You can set it from 0 to 255 if it's a PWM pin. But you have to set each pin, red, green, and blue. So you'd have to enter four commands. With the M150 command, it's designed to control LEDs, so you can do it all in one shot. I just think M150 is easier, but you can still do the same thing with M42. So let's say if we wanted to do M42, we'd have to do M42 P6, P5, and P4, and set that intensity 0 through 255 to get the right mix of color. So let's try it out with our new start and NG code. I've loaded up the print. Let's print from SD. Print starts. We're blue. The bed is heating. The hot end is heating. The bed's up to temp. We're kind of at our pink violet color. Extruder's up to temp, so we're at our red color. We're going to home and level. The print has started, so now we're going to the white color. The print is complete, so we're going to raise the Z. We went to our green color. Now we're waiting for our bed to cool down to 35. Our bed's cooled down, so we moved our Y position, and now we're on blue. And now we're just in our G4 command, waiting for the LEDs to turn off, and the LEDs are off. And there you go, custom LEDs for your 3D printer. And you can do it a couple of different ways. You can let Marlin control it, or you can do it in your start and end G code and get as creative as you want. Again, you can use the M42 command to set pin status, but I think the M150 command is a lot easier. Now this is a lot of work for LEDs, but it might be something you want to look at when you're building your next printer, or maybe integrating it into your enclosure. It can be really handy to get a status at just a glance. I hope you liked this video or you found it helpful. If you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up or subscribing to my channel. If not, leave your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.